Alright everyone, welcome back to Be Mother Reviews. Today we've got the XM Studios Gambit, the latest to join their X-Men line. And this statue has actually been a long time coming. I think it was originally supposed to be part of their 1-6 scale X-Men Alliance Sentinel Diorama, that big massive thing that you've seen floating around from the conventions. Uh, but then after the Marvel vs. Fox X-Men feud, they decided to revamp the statue and add it to their one quarter scale line. Now was that the right decision and was the statue worth the wait? We'll find out in the review next. <laughs> Alright, Gambit is another one of those characters whose first appearance in the comics is somewhat up for debate. Now, the money book is Uncanny X-Men number 266. That is his first full appearance. However, he did appear in the pages of the Uncanny X-Men annual number 14. And he actually had a pretty big role in that book. He appeared in several panels in full costume. They call him by name and they he does have some speaking lines. So a lot of people feel that that is his true first appearance. But we will save the cameo versus first full appearance debate for another episode. Gambit hails from the deep south in New Orleans, Louisiana, and that gives him his distinctive Cajun accent and dialect where he blends French and English in his speech, and that's part of what makes him so unique. Now, Gambit is a fairly stereotypical 90s character. In fact, if you wanted to choose one character to represent that entire decade for Marvel, Gambit might not be a terrible choice. He lies, he drinks, he smokes, he steals, he cheats, and he's something of a playboy on top of that. It makes you wonder if he could have been created in any other decade of Marvel history. But I actually like that Gambit isn't your typical goody two-shoes hero. In fact, as his origin was sort of fleshed out following his debut, it was revealed that he is something of a dark past. He actually started out working for one of the most nefarious X-Men villains of all time, that is, Mr. Sinister. He led a team of marauders until he dis discovered that their mission was to massacre the innocent Morlocks. He decided he wanted none of it. Now, he eventually met up with Storm, who at the time was trapped in the body of a small child. He rescued her, and eventually they befriended one another and went on to perform several heists together. And, uh, you know, eventually she befriends him and invites him to join the team of the X-Men. The rest is history, of course. He's also very well known for his romance with fellow fan favorite team member, Rogue. Now, they first met in the early pages of that iconic X-Men series by Chris Claremont and Jim Lee in the early 90s, and in, in fact, won his first date with Rogue by winning a game of two-on-two -two basketball in issue number four. That issue is also the first appearance of the villain known as Omega Red. If you're a fan of that character, stay tuned to the channel. Now, Rogue is not the easiest person to be with because of her special mutant ability, but they do find a way to make it work and in fact got married in the recent series Mr. and Mrs. X. So, the story of Gambit is definitely one of redemption. He's a very, very interesting and cool character easy to see why he's become a fan favorite over the years, but with the fans adoration comes the weight of great expectations. Can this statue live up to those expectations? Well, let's start off talking sculpt and design and we'll find out next. All right, this statue was sculpted by XM Studios senior art director Martin Augusta Simney. And if you don't recognize the name, you might recognize some of his statues. He did the original Yellow Suit Wolverine. He did the Mysterio on the shelf behind me, the 1-6 scale Wonder Woman, and of course the 2019 large statue of the year, the Dark Phoenix. So he's built himself up a pretty nice portfolio over the years and Gambit is the latest to join it. Um, so let's start off with the base on this statue. It's the pretty standard you know, sentinel battle scene here. Um, I don't know exactly what part of the sentinel this is, but you can see the two jet engines here in the back. Um, very cool details there. Um, I want to say these are fingers, but I don't think they are fingers because we of course saw the sentinel hand on the original Magneto on Throne. So they're not fingers. I don't know what they are, but 
Nevertheless, you know immediately it's some part of a sentinel, and they look kind of cool too, so I think they do their job nicely. Gambit, you know, one of the early critiques on this statue was that the pose looked kind of awkward, but now that I have it in hand here, I have to say it looks a lot more natural and fluid than I thought it did. It actually kind of shows off his enhanced agility quite nicely here. You see him leaping through the air and landing on one foot here on top of this sentinel part and flicking his hand in the air, launching a stream of charged up cards. Of course, his mutant ability allows him to convert the potential energy of an object into kinetic energy with explosive results. That's right, anything he touches he can turn into a bomb essentially and one of his favorite projectiles are playing cards and it's such a cool ability. Uh, I don't know what's so cool about throwing playing cards but he does it and Bullseye does it. I think it looks awesome in both cases. So very unique to Gambit is the playing cards. Uh, Gambit himself has some really nice details. Of course you got the armored boots with the signature kneecap there and the signature pink stripes up the side of his legs and they've added some panel lines there on his legs and nice muscle detail through the quads. N again nice muscle detail through the chest and they've added some you know, a honeycomb pattern there for some texture. The collar they have kind of a, a vertical a line pattern there. A little bit of battle damage but typically that is a random crisscross line pattern there so that might be the one departure from you know the typical comic book costume on this piece nevertheless it looks pretty nice nice portrait on this statue he's got a little bit of a smirk on his face it's a good looking face but you can tell there's a darker side there as I said he's not your typical do-gooder hero he's got the hair flowing out the top um, you know in one of his signature looks now the trench coat, again, part of that signature costume for the character and they've given it some really nice details, you know, through the collar here. Uh, looks like a padded interior and of course he's got the collar pop for that extra cool factor there. Uh, some nice texture on the back. They got the stitching, uh, some panel lines there, they got the elbow pads, the buckles on the wrist. You see the belt flailing through the air too so it just gives it a little bit more of that dynamic feel to the statue. Uh, the coat I think looks really good on this piece. He's got his bow staff in hand as well so they got all the elements here for a signature Gambit statue and I think they did an amazing job with the sculpt. This statue does have a couple switch out parts so I'll talk about those next. Alright so as promised this statue does have a couple switch out parts and perhaps most notably uh, you'll see the alternate right hand. We're missing the energy arc here and instead you have the single card in hand here and this card here is the jack and on the energy arc you have the ace queen king and ten so if you put all five cards together of course you get the royal flush which is kind of cool but I still would have rather had the jack instead of the ten on the arc but hey I realize that is obscenely nitpicky so I actually kind of like this arm option I'm the more I see it the more I'm kind of leaning towards this being my final display and the biggest reason for that is I found that the energy arc kind of blocks his face from view from some angles and this one here gives you a little bit more flexibility I think in how you display the piece so as I said I'm, I'm kind of leaning towards this option here. You get of course another switch out portrait this being the longer hair a little bit more of a modern look for the character uh, definitely more of a serious look on this face there's no joking around here he's all business um, this portrait his face looks a little bit skinnier for some reason and I don't know if it if it actually is or if it's just the long hair that that's creating that kind of look but overall it's a nice portrait it's a nice option to have but I think I prefer the short haired portrait and to me that's more of the signature gambit look anyways so a couple switch out parts for the piece to change up the look. I will note that you do get two belts for the piece and the reason for that is this other belt has a hole in one of the belt loops and that's actually where you plug in the energy arc through that hole and into the back. So this belt that is on it doesn't have that hole so when you're not using the energy arc you don't have that obvious hole in his back so 
Nice attention to detail there from XM. Couple nice switch out parts for the statue. Let's move on and talk about paint. All right, so paint wise, one of the early critiques on the production piece here is that the base looks a little bit different from the prototype figure. Uh, one area of, for that is these purple areas of the Sentinel. People thinking that looks a lot brighter, more vibrant than what was shown. And I agree, when you compare to the official production photos, it does look a lot brighter here. Uh, but I don't know if that's the best comparison because those photos are always quite muted and quite dark. So when you look at some of the convention photos that have a little bit brighter lighting, I'm not convinced that these areas change significantly. Now what did change was he added this copper banding here on the jet engines and this bluish turquoise look around the edges to give it that sort of burnt jet fuel appearance. I quite like those changes. It adds a little bit of a pop of color on the base, but it is different from what was shown, so you'll have to be the judge there. Gambit himself, I like the metallic finish on his boots. Uh, nice shading through the legs. The pink is a nice color on the side of the legs and the chest. Again, nice shading there to help bring out his muscles. These little areas here on his chest are a little bit more of a reddish color. Uh, it just helps break up that pinkish look. Uh, and I think it looks quite nice actually. The collar has a bit of a metallic blue finish there. Um, nice skin tones. His lips have a little bit of a pinkish hue to help separate them from the face. A little bit of a five o'clock shadow there. And of course the signature black sclera and red pupils that help Gambit stand out as a mutant. Um, the coat uh, Pretty decent, you know, leather finish to the coat there. Uh, blacks and browns used throughout. A little bit of a lighter color here on the collar to help it stand out. And you got the silver and red X buttons around the coat as well. So lots of nice detail brought out on the coat. Overall, for me, really not much to complain about. As a production piece, I think they did a really nice job on the paint. So, you know, let's move on. Talk production quality next. All right, first off, let's go through a couple of the extras that you get with this statue. First off, you get the Signature XM art print. This one by Carlos de Tolle, and it's a pretty nice print there. Um, you also get the card with the packing instructions here, which is always nice to have. And on the flip side of that, you get your registration instructions. And then these two QR codes here replace the um, assembly manual that we used to get. These will link you to the assembly video. So a little bit of a different way of doing it, but it still works. Now some of the statues will come with this little metal plaque and it's got a little kickstand on the back so you can display it next to your statue like that if you choose. Um, this one was a little easier to find. It was in the uh, normal layer with all the other pieces. Some of my other plaques have been tucked up under the lid of the statue, so this one was easy to find. So you should know right away if you're getting one of those. Now, on to the hot button issue for this statue upon release. It was the energy arc which was changed rather substantially from what was originally shown. And the big reason for that is they changed the connection point from you know, one of the coattails of his jacket to the belt loop, and they shortened it up significantly to try and help prevent it from leaning over time. Now, the big change there is, of course, you're not getting as round of an arc, and this bottom card is kind of shooting off at an awkward angle now, would land down here somewhere around his feet. Um, collectors were not happy with that look. And you know what? We're not going to dwell on it too, too much because if you haven't heard, XM Studios has already announced they're going to rework that, change it back to the way it was, and uh, send the replacement out to collectors. So, hey, it's a win-win situation for people. I don't think this was the end of the world. I still think it looks pretty good. But as I said, I prefer the look of the original arc and that is what we're going to get at the end of the day. The rest of the statue production wise is very, very good. All the parts go together very well. Got a big metal peg under his foot there to hold him up nice and sturdy. The heads fit with magnets. The right arm fits with magnets. The left arm is permanently attached. 
but the hand does come out here. It fits in with a nice long metal peg. He's holding his bow staff here, which is a real metal staff. I think that's a really nice classy touch for the statue. Um, and as I said, overall the statue goes together nice. It's got a nice weighty feel to it. It feels nice and sturdy. Um, so other than that change to the arc, which is now being fixed, I think it's a really nice production from XM Studios and I'm pretty satisfied with it. All right, everyone, we have arrived at the end of the review. And I think I've arrived at my preferred display option here, the short hair and the single card in hand. I'm really starting to like this look for the piece. Now, overall, I think this is an exceptional Gambit statue. The sculpt and the pose, um, you know, after seeing it in person here, I think it really captures the agility of the character. Um, it captures that swagger the, in the portrait with that little smirk on his face. Uh, you got the hair flowing. Um, I think the paint job is nice and clean. Um, other than the change to the arc, which is now getting fixed anyways, I think it's a really nice, sturdy, solid production from XM Studios. Uh, you got the metal bow staff, which is a nice touch. Um, I really, really am impressed with this statue. I think right now today, it's the best Gambit statue available. Now, Sideshow, of course, has their maquette coming up. We're going to have a review of that statue on the channel, and we will do a side-by-side -side comparison on a future episode of Be Mother Live, so stay tuned for that. Always stay tuned to the channel. There is tons more coming in the coming months, so make sure you subscribe. I hope you guys enjoyed that review of the XM Studios Gambit. We'll talk to you guys soon.